Good afternoon, all of you. I request all the women employees to come uh, forward and to uh, take the front seats. All the women employees, women scientists, all, all. I request. <laughs> Namaskar and a very good afternoon to all of you. I think uh, um, Mrs. Uma Magal uh, is online. Yes, hi. Hello. So, uh, hearty welcome to you, ma'am, uh, to NGRI. And uh, today we are here uh, to celebrate uh, the International Women's Day. As we know, every year it is celebrated on March 8th globally to mark the women's achievements and increasing the visibility of their work. So I cannot say that this is a fight for equality. Why? Because according to Sadhguru, the thought that women are inferior to men is absurd. When a man is born of a woman, uh, how can be uh, so he be superior and she inferior? So until we as parents uh, teach our sons that only uh, way to be a better man is to respect a woman and not degrade her. That's what whole society, then only a whole society will change. So of course we have moved far and there's a lot of possibility positivity in nowadays. So with these uh, words, it is my pleasure to extend a hearty welcome uh, to Miss to Uma Magal, today's wonderful chief guest. She is a filmmaker, director, producer, and she is a very inspiring lady to all the women. Hearty welcome to you, ma'am. Thank I, you so much. Uh, thank you. I now request our director to grace the dais and to deliver his opening remarks.
thank you, Vasanti. Good afternoon to all. And also greetings to everyone present here. Dear colleagues, it is my great pleasure to celebrate this International Women Day with you all and share my some of the thoughts to you. Bhagavan wahi baas karta hai jaha nari ki puja hoti hai. This is the, what we learn from our Indian culture and our story, old stories from uh, even the, from the Sanskrit books. But most of us know that the modern International Women Day, uh, the history traced back to 20th century when women began marching for the peace and therefore better life. 8 March was officially recognized by United Nations in 1977 as International Women Day. It is the day we all know to recognize and celebrate the contribution of uh, women in our life and society, also the country. It is needless to say that their contribution to our life is unparalleled. We all, but unfortunately, we all agree that uh, some uh, most of the countries, I think almost all countries, have not achieved this uh, standard of uh, the equality or giving the respect to the women in hundred percent. The women have not been given still the equality in all sense to the fullest. That's why in 2023, by our uh, United Nations has declared uh, this one as a Women's Day as a digital, an innovation and a technology for gender equality. Uh, highlighting, but they have highlighted that the gender gaps in STEM in uh, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, uh, to, feel, to actually highlighting this gap in, in this STEM, uh, STEM disciplines, and calling for the attention to the online harassments of women. Even though we recognize that the contribution of women is uh, increasing, increasingly huge now, massively increased in higher education. But still, if you find uh, the gaps, the numbers are really underrepresented. Therefore, the equality for the women is uh, a, really a very big problem for our policymaker and also for the United Nations too. Gender equality and empowerment for women and girls is a very crucial factor, key issue. I thought uh, mine is okay. It is a, is a crucial factor, key factor. It is not only for the development of a nation or the society, but also for the target agenda of 2030 uh, for sustainable development as well. Uh, with this, uh, maybe I re uh, recall just one uh, joke by uh, R.K. Lakshman that uh, one lady asked him, why you are uh, only uh, writing for common man? Because uh, you see there are books by uh, R.K. Lakshman, the common man. But uh, then he replied that uh, men are common, but women are not uh, common. <laughs> so, uh, with uh, Just uh, I remember by saying this. And also, uh, recently I noticed uh, while traveling in a train, because uh, a few last week I was traveling by a train, and I found that uh, one couple with uh, kids that came into the uh, railway uh, the compartment and sat in a wooden uh, chair. And the another uh, person, another couple, uh, wife and husband, they came inside and sat opposite to them. And what I observed from a distance that the first uh, conversation began between the two women. It is not the man and the woman. So uh, this shows, uh, but, but there is a, a very inner meaning. There is, there, this shows 
the universal brotherhood or universal uh, unity is inherent in the woman, not in the man. The first signal it comes. So uh, with this, I will not take much time. Uh, I will say that NGRI would like to appreciate this year and celebrate the success and achievement of women colleagues in all sphere of our activity. Aligning with our nation's policy, NGRI will also encourage to do the best and to encourage our women researcher from scientific fields, from, from admin, from the all corners of uh, life here uh, to come forward and contribute to their best to the fullest. We must also renew our commitments, whatever we made, to pursue all the opportunity for their growth. Lastly, I am ha very much happy to share this occasion with our special guest, producer, director, Mrs. Uma Mangalji, uh, who will provide us a very different vision of the Hyderabad rocks. It is rocks. It is the geological rocks. I need to say. Thank you very much. I now request uh, Dr. Devinder to introduce today's guest. Thank you, Vasanti. And uh, it's my pleasant duty to introduce the chief guest of today, Ms. Umaji. Of course, we had a very short interaction uh, with her in the last few days only. But she is uh, not uh, unknown to many of us who are dealing with or loving the rocks. Uh, <clears throat> I'll start with one lyrics of uh, one song. Saso ke tar par dhadkan ki tal par Dil ki pukar ka rang bhare pyar ka Geet gaya patharo ne So it is the, from the movie Geet gaya patharo ne Long back it was short But for uh, Umaji, if I want to introduce her in one line I can say that unhone Geet Gawaya Patharose. So that is the very short introduction of her. So, but anyway, I'll try to read out few of her. Uh, as an uh, Umaji, she is an independent filmmaker and teacher working out of Hyderabad and Dublin. She is uh, with us right from uh, Dublin right now, actually. And she is the owner of uh, Fenu Greek Productions, a boutique studio for media and film film work and training. She graduated from Lady Sri Ram College, New Delhi, and a master's she did in political science from the University of Hyderabad. So she has a very good connection to Hyderabad as such. And then again, uh, she did master's in communication from the Mass Communication Research Center, Jamia Milia Islamia, New Delhi. <clears throat> so during, uh, after uh, her PG, I think she went to US and spent a lot of time there wherein she earned a Master of Finance, uh, Fine Arts in Film Production from Temple University. And she produced a PBS weekly series called as News, News 6 for sixth grade school children, taught film and media at San Francisco State and Temple Universities, and served on the boards of Asian Arts Initiatives and Independent Film and Video Association in Philadelphia. She also worked with the Scribe Video Center to teach media literacy and the use of video as an empowering tool, particularly for the disenfranchised communities. Then she returned to India, and then uh, she served as an independent faculty in film aesthetics, documentary production, and Indian cinema at Bengaluru, the University of Hyderabad, and Annapurna Film School. She co-produced and co-directed a feature documentary on theater, which we know as The Players, which was subsequently acquired by NDTV. She has worked in diverse capacities in theater as lead actor, as well as in production and writing in Delhi, Bengaluru, and Hyderabad. So you can see that uh, she has a lot of affinity to Hyderabad as such. 
then she served as the as the secretary of the international asian film society that publishes the journal asian cinema she has presented a diverse at diverse conferences and published on film and theater for academic journals magazines and newspapers including the hindu tahalka and the hans india her book which she co-authored rasayana for children joy of herbs and healing on using medicinal plants from home and garden was published by patrice press again <clears throat> recently in hyderabad after a long stint abroad and uh, studying working in film she has deeply she has been deeply affected by the uh, sorry I, I missed something here so deeply affected by the loss of rocks in hyderabad actually because uh, with so much of development people are destroying the rocks daily on daily basis so she was quite moved by this <laughs> phenomena and then she put her skills and personal funds into the matter and began to make a film about it she then approached an old friend and fellow in hyderabad mr mahnoor yar khan to join her uma and mahnoor have been driven by their personal affections and memories of growing up around the rocks so they strongly feel the need for a heightened and widespread dialogue to save what is left of the rocks in the city so we cannot recreate what has been lost but we can still save whatever we have we are left with it. even as the city grows in response to the compulsions of 21st century urban realities it can still do so with a sense of balance that retains wisely what is left of a stunning and unique geo heritage so further i may add that few for works like uh, on the occasion of international women's day yesterday on 8th of march and today also her film players is being screened at kochi muzri's biennial as part of a women docu fest in kochi this is about a traveling theater uh, <coughs> repertory called tirugata run by the wonderful rural theater space called ninasam in karnataka and as she says it that it was a real education for her in world class theater her current film and which is uh, very close to our heart and subject and work other kohinoors the rocks of hyderabad is on the unique landscape of, landscape of hyderabad and it ties to the areas cultural imagination and which is the kind of theme she is going to speak with us today and before i hand over the stage to uh, uma ji i would request nareshi to play the trailer of this film which we will screen soon uh, at an earliest opportunity in our shoot so let's have the trailer other kohinoors the rocks of hyderabad कौसक अजह से रंगत ली कुछ नूर चुराया तारों से बिजली से तड़प को मांग लिया कुछ कैफ उड़ाया बहारों से फूलों से महक शाखों से लचक 
और मंडवों से ठंडा सा है जंगल की कुवारी कलियों ने दे डाला अपना सरमाया बिखरी हुई रंगीन किरणों को आंखों से चुनकर लाता हूं फितरत के परेशान नगमों से एक अपना गीत बनाता हूं फिर दो से ख्याली में बैठा एक बुत को तराशा करता हूं फिर अपने दिल की धड़कन को पत्थर के दिल में भरता हूं thank you and as i told that uh, uh, at the earliest possible we will try to screen the full documentary uh, in our institute and inhi sabdon ke sath main thoda sa aur ye kehte hue kisi patthar ki murat se mohabbat ka irada hai parishtish ki tamanna hai ibadat ka irada hai so uma ji ne aaj humko जो इस अपने वक्तव्य में व्याख्यान में पूरी कहानी बताएंगी कि हैदराबाद के जो चट्टाने हैं वो किन किन कहानियों को अपने में समेटे हुए हैं और उनसे हम क्या क्या संदेश ले सकते हैं और उनके एक कलाकार के और एक वैज्ञानिक के दृष्टिकोण में उनके मत के मत मंतव्य में क्या फर्क रहता है किस तरह से वो लोग चट्टानों को देखते हैं और किस तरह से हम लोग देखते हैं इन्हीं सब बातों को बताने के लिए उमा जी आज हमारे बीच में उपस्थित हैं तो अब स्टेज आपका है उमा जी थैंक यू बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया नमस्ते आई एम सो हैप्पी टू बी हियर और इतना पोएटिक इंट्रोडक्शन मेरा कभी भी नहीं हुआ <laughs> इसके लिए भी बहुत शुक्रिया थैंक यू सो मच फॉर हैविंग मी हियर टुडे डॉक्टर प्रकाश डॉक्टर कुसुमिता डॉक्टर देवेंद्र जी ऑल ऑफ यू ऑल एंड एवरी एट at the institute thank you so much for inviting me this is a very special um, you know session for me because um, you all come from a such a different perspective on this whole matter that i care so passionately about 
So for me, it's really uh, very exciting to, uh, to be here and to uh, interact with this community. Um, you know, uh, I just want to say something in response to Dr. Prakash's joke also. You know, there is a joke when we started this film. Um, it was a huge challenge, a really monumental challenge. We had no idea how, how we would make this happen. Um, nobody was interested. Nobody really wanted to make a film on rocks, but, you know, I, I really wanted to do it. And um, in our research, one of the most fun uh, little jokes we found is, you know, there's a saying about Hyderabadis. Um, that, uh, you know, we wanted, uh, we, when we learned about it, it's uh, from this wonderful, um, you know, um, lady Lakshmi Devi Raj, who's an old Hyderabadi. And uh, in meeting so many Hyderabadis and so many experts in the research for the film, we met her as well. And she said, Dekho, ye yaad rakh lo, Hyderabad ke baare mein. Susti ke aadi, Hyderabadi. So, you know. <laughs> We really, instead of, you know, um, uh, feeling bad about it, we said, okay, this is a challenge for us. So, you know, that is how this whole film started, this whole project started and, um, you know, learning about rocks and all that. And I'll speak more about that as we go on. But I thought I'd share that with you to start with. Um, you know, when I, um, when, when I heard from uh, the Institute, that they would be interested in the film. I can't tell you how delighted I was. It was just that you are the people who really know the material. You, you know, you really know it from such a deep and profound aspect that, you know, it, it's, it's really very thrilling to hear um, that there is an interest in this film from a community such as yours. In fact, when I went to the website, I was amazed, you know, I, I find your work so exciting. Um, it was, I, I read this and I was like, my goodness, look at the profound work that is happening at this institute. It says, you know, uh, on your website, um, uh, how thick is the crust under Hyderabad? Now, who thinks of these things? Who thinks about this? Clearly you do, but you know, people like me don't know this. And it was so exciting to find out about it. And it said, recently scientists at the National Geophysical Research Institute figured it out. You know, how thick is this crust under Hyderabad? While doing so, they were able to pinpoint specific locations where the infrastructure is less likely to be damaged by earthquakes. Scientists from CSIR and GRI established 10 seismographs in and around Hyderabad to study the Mohorovic discontinuity of those like me who find it difficult to pronounce the name of the Croatian scientist Moho, the boundary between the crust and the mantle under the Hyderabad region. This is so profoundly important and I can't tell you, um, you know, um, I would love to know more about it. I would love it if um, there would be some sessions for the common folk like me uh, to know more about this, because um, I think that will also help in this whole effort to keep what we have left. Um, so with that, um, I, I will say a profound thank you to you uh, for having me here today. I do come with the humility of knowing that I, there's so much that I don't know. Um, and I do hope that our interaction today and hopefully future interactions uh, will make an exchange happen. And, you know, some of that exchange uh, from your, from you to the populace will certainly be very important. Um, so, um, Dr. Kusumita, when I first spoke with her, mentioned to me that, you know, the NGRI community would be interested to see the cultural approach to the rocks. Um, I'd like to say a little bit about how I came to it. You know, it wasn't um, natural. Um, Devendraji mentioned this, um, you know, my previous uh, film that screened yesterday at Kochi, Muzaris, uh, The Biennale. Um, and that is an interview-based documentary. It is about these young artists of um, the Tirugata, you know, which is a Kannada word for... Uh, traveling around. It's a travel uh, theater repertory. And they take plays, world-class plays, in, done in a world-class uh, standards, to world-class standards around, uh, you know, they perform in cow sheds, at school grounds, in theaters, at compounds, all kinds of places. And, you know, that film was an interview-based film. It, it, we interviewed these four wonderful lead actors of that 
uh, Tirugata in its 25th year, 25 years they had been doing it now, it's 35 years that film is, you know, about 8, 10 years old. And um, it worked beautifully, interview-based documentaries worked beautifully. But when I came to this film about the rocks of Hyderabad, I thought, ki, uh, you know, there needs to be a different approach. People may not relate to one more documentary where we tell them with experts about the geology, about the, uh, you know, the details of, um, of our rocks. And so in thinking and thinking how to do it as a filmmaker, that approach made more sense to me, you know, and the way I came to it was like I mentioned, we interviewed for about two and a half years, the research went on for the documentary. And um, we interviewed scores of people, geologists, you know, experts, uh, environmentalists, um, poets, all kinds of people, um, in the hope of learning, because uh, I started from a blank slate, I just knew I loved the rocks. And Hyderabad was is my hometown. My grandfather settled here. He came from Karnataka and he settled here in Domalgoda. So, you know, we always were familiar with the rocks. And uh, so that was, you know, but I didn't know anything more and had to learn. Now, um, I thought, okay, if I am so interested in the rocks and this landscape of the city, how unique it is, how stunning it is, surely the senior, better Hamare Jukpuruk you know, the previous artists of previous generations, surely they must have felt the same and they must have left a tradition. And I wanted to find out more about that. And there was no information, nothing that nobody we spoke to could tell us about this. You know, how have the rocks been featured by other artists in earlier years and decades and centuries? And then what happened was um, Shankar Melkote, who's a very well-known person in the city, um, in theater, film, and, you know, in uh, crafts and textiles, he's done a lot of work in the cultural sphere. And when he heard my question, he said, okay, come, I'll take you to um, a very important person, uh, Sri Jagdish Muttalji, you know, who also lives in Domalgur. It turns out he knew my grandfather. And it was amazing. He lived down the road from my house, but I did not know of this. And Jagdish Mittal Saab, you know, he's a collector of world stature. Um, it's enough for me to tell you, uh, you all probably know about him, but if, for those who don't, it's enough for me to say that um, Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis visited him and saw his collection. So he's at that level. I know people in Dublin here at Trinity College who study his collection techniques and his collection vision you know, so he's at that level. And so when I met him, he's a wonderful, humble man. He was at that time 80 years old, but fit and his brain was completely sharp. It still is at 90 plus. And when he heard my question, he immediately knew what I was asking. And from his collection, he took out this really a treasure trove of information in Bidri. You saw the shot in the trailer, Bidri me, the rocks are featured by the Bidri artists of our area. Um, in Dakhani miniature paintings, they are there, um, you know, uh, the Ragini uh, paintings, uh, miniature paintings, they're beautiful. The rocks are like fantastically uh, depicted. Um, so um, in that and in many other ways, he sort of um, revealed, it was a revelation, literally, um, that the culture has over generations and decades and centuries valued the rocks, shown love and respect for them. Um, and we know that that is how cultures all over India are. In, in If you go, you could go to UP, you can go to Kerala, you can go anywhere, and you'll see that the culture, our songs, our uh, traditions, our folk traditions, our crafts, our textiles, all showcase the landscape, have a deep tie with the landscape. And that was it. That was it. When I when I saw that, there was just a spark, you know, an explosion in my mind that Milgia, you know, this is how we go about it. And I was very uh, confident that um, it will speak to people, you know, that um, to do it this way with our own beautiful culture, you know, will make that connection happen where people will, you know, respond to it. And so that was really the start of this, um, uh, you know, and since 
I was asked, you know, to speak about uh, ab about the cultural imagination around the rocks in our area. I thought this would be a good introduction. So you'll you'll know where I was coming from, from a place of nothing, of knowing nothing, but just wondering and wanting to know and, you know, and then finding this real treasure. Um, so um, that was how it began. Um, the other important thing I would like to share with you about the beginning of this film is, you know, I, uh, as Dr. Devendraj, Devendraji kindly has informed you, I was all over the world, I was studying in America and Delhi, all kinds of places. And then when I came back, um, I raised my children in Hyderabad. Uh, I was a young mother when I came and they grew up here in Hyderabad. And uh, it was wonderful because, you know, there were these rocks all around us. We were in the Gachibauli area um, and uh, there were rocks everywhere. And we could, you know, because we wanted to keep the children off the gadgets, TV, VV and all that. So we used to, in our colony, we would, all the mothers and fathers would, especially on weekends, we gather the children and go off on the rocks. You know, to, uh, there was the society to save rocks that did these wonderful rock walks that we took them on. Then there was, um, there is a greater Hyderabad adventure club and the adventure club would organize bouldering sessions and all this. And so it was great fun to do this. And then in that decade, 10 years, uh, in front of our eyes, we saw all those rocks go. They just went. And today we know, you know, uh, where I'm sure you all all also coming from the airport into the city. There was a time when there were rocks all around. I have friends who would visit me, my relatives from all over the world, and I would take them to show them these rocks. You know, my in-laws especially, you know, would come and Hyderabad is hometown for me. So for me, it was very proud for my, to show my in-laws that this is um, Idi, you know, this is what we are proud of. This is our landscape. And there was great pride in it. And then this whole experience with the children and all. And then when it went, when it all got blasted now, if you come from the airport, there's just a few rocks that you see, which the government has lit up and, you know, it, it's still there a little bit. But that earlier grandiose spectacle of the rocks is not there and then from uh, if you think of from um, what used to be the biodiversity park to in orbit mall all that was rocks and all of that is gone as we know now i want to make it very clear that i'm not an anti-development person i enjoy the new airport as much as anyone uh, people need housing we have you know the compulsions of an urban growing vibrant city and that's fine we have to work with that but you know to lose such a profound geo heritage which you all in this institute know so much about um and study and you know your work is steeped in it to lose it is is just not a very wise move there's nothing wise about it and so that was really the starting point of how, why i started making this film it really started in grief you know, because the children would also where chale gaye? How did these go? Who took them? You know, uh, where are the peacocks? Where are the snakes that were here? You know, they would have these questions and there was no answer. And so I thought, okay, let me make a, the, this is my skill, this is what I do. Let me make a small film where, you know, we'll have a discussion with the children so that they will hopefully heal with it. You know, talking about it, they'll feel better. And then we show it in their schools. I had a small plan. It was only as I learned and learned and learned and, you know, figured out all these connections and these, the, the enormous environmental impact it has, how we can never get rocks back. Trees, we can still hope to replant, but rocks, as you all know better than me, we can't. And so that grief was the starting of this film. Uh, and it became, uh, as it grew and grew the project, it became a bigger and bigger project. And now here we are today. Um, I, and that it was, I, I won't say it was a good thing, but it was a very important discovery for me that there is this Australian academic and researcher who you all might know better than me. Uh, his name is Glenn Albrecht. And he's written a book. Uh, he's written many books about this whole issue of um, how humans and human health is affected by the degradation of our environment. And he has coined this word, which uh, I was, I can't say happy to find out about, but it 
gave me some peace because I realized, okay, this is everywhere. It's not just my little, you know, colony and what we are feeling. It is a broad worldwide phenomena. He called, he coined this word called solastalgia. And I'm going to just read, um, you know, uh, just very quickly what, he, what is said about it. Um, as opposed to nostalgia, the melancholia or homesickness experienced by individuals when separated from a loved home, which I often feel when I'm in Dublin, I miss Hyderabad and India so much. Um, that is nostalgia, that is, you know, a homesickness that, that we experience. Solastalgia is different. This is the distress that is produced by environmental change impacting on people while they are directed, directly connected to that environment. You see, so uh, this solastalgia um, is what I would say is the foundation of this film. The realization that it's gone, you know, this environment. You can't recognize the face of your own home, of your own hometown. The landscape has changed so much. Um, I was in Hyderabad just two weeks back and uh, for the film and uh, the project, which I'll tell you more about. Um, and it's still changing. It's constantly changing. And it really is, um, this quest is uh, to find a way to save the remaining rock spaces in Hyderabad, you know, so that we we have a unique culture um, that is tied to this, this landscape. We have uh, a unique city. No other city in India has this. And surely there are reasons to keep it. There's environmental reasons, ecological reasons water resources, the rocky landscape, you all will know better, retains the water. You know, we have uh, a, a lung spaces created in the city that will help our pollution issues. We, all this, you all will really know this very well. So um, this is the quest with this film project, you know, starting from grief, finding all this information. And I must say that um, the information that we found in the research and the process of making this film has been a joy. You know, of course there are challenges. What doesn't have challenges? Everything, you know, you have to work at. But the, the rewards of it have been so great. You know, the, it's been a joy to discover how our culture shows such affection. You saw that song, I, I tell you, my, I get goosebumps when I hear that song. It's, it's so, so much respect and value is given to the rocks in that. And that's just one symbol of how the culture does this. Um, I hope you all screen the film and uh, we will be glad to, you know, usually we send a discussant, our outreach manager comes with it, and we have some people from the team who will come and share the experience. It's a very, it's a very engaging um, event. I can guarantee you that from the experience that we've had so far. And I would love to screen it. Um, and, uh, you know, you'll see that how different aspects of the culture have shown this respect and affection. And the need of the hour is really, uh, my whole team feels this, is to, you know, showcasing that respect, that value that the culture has given it, to bring that back, to bring that respect and affection back. Uh, because um, many people, for us, you know, sometimes, even for me, when I used to go to college and all, uh, living from Domalguda, you know, the rocks were all in the background. One never really realized it. You know, um, one knew it and we went on it and we played on it and all that good stuff, but they were always in the background. But now people who come don't even have that. You know, the new people of Hyderabad, the new generation in Hyderabad doesn't even have that. Our children don't have it. So, you know, um, it's important to keep the remaining rocks. And that is the reason this film has been made and this whole project is happening. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about the process. Um, you know, it um, about the process, the most wonderful thing uh, I would like to start with that as was has been the way this team has grown. You know, it was very uh, interesting to find out. It's been really exciting to find out that people care. You know, we, we think we're sometimes so jaded in our lives, you know, running the house, raising children, doing the job, uh, working, 
there's no time for anything else and you think people can't, won't relate they'll be too busy to think about all this you you know that was one dimension that we had to factor when we started this project but the discovery has been quite rev a revelation people care people connect people want to help and that's how this team group you know that's how this film group I, I like i mentioned i thought of a small film but then as someone came and said uh, you know told this folklore uh, the yellama renukamma story or the kagazi burj story of golconda someone said and then we started thinking oh why don't we include this and then we said okay let's do it with in animation because now who can re recreate uh, these legends so um, animation karna who will do the animation and then we had to approach people and amazingly people joined people joined for love of the rocks for love of the city and its culture and its landscape which is amazing because we didn't have money you know i put in my own funds to start with um and then uh, we went on um but initially to even offer an honorarium there was no money later on what we did and that was another education we started a crowdfunding campaign and i would love you to go to the website otherkohinoors.com we have uploaded these sessions that we did uh, and it's they're all free uh, for anybody to see this whole film is a free service film is what i call it um it is a service to my hometown and the team that joined has the same philosophy behind it you know there are other films uh, like you heard the players it is doing well the, the bread and butter comes there this is service um and and so um you know all this whole team gathered uh, and as it gathered it grew and grew and grew there was folklore um the then we got the idea that oh let's do it in the local styles like you know cheriel is such a beautiful art form let's do the animation of yellamma in kuma in the cheriel style and we had to find someone to do it and she agreed and she worked for a very small honorarium another friend did uh, another animation for free like this it grew um and uh, the 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 whole you know journey um became like this whole um learning finding people the people joining and the people inputting such fabulous talent and so i really have to give huge credit to this team behind this film yeah and i mentioned the crowd funding and i'd like to tell you something it it was a it was an education like i i i said we thought that a crowd funding we have to do now how do you do it we had no idea we've never done it before but we'd heard now everybody talks about crowd funding and so we said okay our style will be different we if we want to ask people for something then we have to give them something also you know we can't just say you know give us money that's not it doesn't it doesn't come natural to us so then we said we'll do these sessions called the i am here to wonder sessions and actually devender ji is uh, opening uh, 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 you know a little bit of shayari uh, uh, the song the famous film song geet gaya patthro ne it was called that the first session we did was called geet gaya patthro ne you see we were finding so much information about how, different parts of the culture so we found out many many songs that show the same love for the rocks and so in the session what we did is we invited people including indian idol stars from hyderabad and all who graciously agreed again this is the spirit of this film they graciously agreed no money was given to anybody you know no payment was made they all came uh, to the session it was all online it was during covid and um, they sang such beautiful songs you know in in hindi in telugu in english um and that was our first session and in that uh, we were not very efficient in asking for money um uh, you know nothing much came from that except of course the joy everybody enjoyed it we got a lot of feedback and response and the project grew because the, there was no monetary thing but you know in terms of response it was huge and then with that we got more people to work on the film people said okay i'll sing for you i'll do this for you you know so there were the rewards come in many ways is a discovery also in this film then we did another session um and this time it was on cooking so we said patthar ka gosht you saw in the trailer is a very famous hyderabadi dish um for vegetarians you know i'm a vegetarian myself so we do it um, you know there's a lovely 
dish from Karnataka where, you know, batter is taken and cooked in little holes in stone. Uh, Gulla Bhaji, we call it, or, uh, you know, so they, it's, it's all over the South it is made. And so we, we did that. Um, and we thought, let's extend the session to the landscape and how, you know, landscape has affected the cuisine of the area. And every community, so many different communities have joined Hyderabad and have enriched Hyderabadi culture, right? The city's culture. And every community's cuisine, we discovered, has been affected by one thing for sure. Many things have been affected. Uh, you know, it's been a give and take. But one thing was Imli. The infusion of Imli into uh, into the different cuisines of Marwadis or you know, Tamilians or Kannadigas or uh, people from UP, the whole Kayas community that came here. So everyone's cuisine was affected by Imli. And so we did um, cook along in that session um, of Safed Mirchi Kasalan. You know, this is when the Imli is young and it's not yet turned brown. And that's a great speciality also in Hyderabad, as many of you all will, will know. So we had a wonderful lady who led the session and that was a huge hit. And in that, we had a wonderful MC who pushed for crowdfunding and we got a huge response. Not much, not big amounts, but a lot of people sent us little, little amounts, which is very precious. For me, one of the most precious contributions is from this young lab scientist, this girl who works at LV Prasad Labs. And she sent rupees 500. You know, it is so precious, I can't tell you. It, because what it means is what is important, that she believes in this effort, that she loves the rocks, just like all of you, you know, and she cared enough to make that effort, you know, so so that's how we went about it. Um, these sessions, you'll be interested to know, well, they were all supported by Goethe Zentrum. I mean, they ran the techs, techs, technical aspect of it. And, um, you know, I was um, I was reading this book uh, on uh, called a deep history of the Indian subcontinent, um, uh, and I, it was a fascinating book. Again, you all for y'all it will be common knowledge, but for me it was a real education. And um, um, when I spoke to the author, his name is Pranay Lal. Uh, he suggests he asked me to look up some other resources about you know um, the history of the earth itself, and that led me to uh, Goethe. You know, Goethe himself, I believe, and this was in, in a talk, when he saw the majesty of the Earth's rocks, these were not in Hyderabad, these were in Europe, but when he saw that majesty, he apparently just, it, it just came out of him. He said, I am here to wonder, you know, I'm just, it's so majestic, this, uh, this performance almost, this gift, this blessing from the Earth to us, to, to everything that's on Earth, not just human beings. So, you know, we titled those sessions, the I am here to wonder sessions. So the first one was, I am here to wonder Geet Gaya Patrone. The second one was, I am here to wonder the Kohinoor Kitchen Cook Along, which I just described to you. The third one was on rock and art, rocks and art. And this, please, I really urge you since you all, the reason you all have invited me is to know about the cultural imagination around the rocks. This session is world class, literally world class. Um, it, it, it has uh, experts from all over the world. There are two main ladies, ladies, I'm glad to say, who, who talk about the rocks in Dakini painting, you know, and I can't tell you the fantastical shapes that you see, the colors, the rocks are in purple and pink and gold and brown and, you know, uh, it's just fantastic. And so please do, uh, if uh, to follow up on this session, I would suggest go to otherkohinoors.com, go to the events section, and there you will find all the sessions and the rocks and art session is also there. Um, and I think you will enjoy it. It really is uh, world class information. Um, then we, our recent session that we did uh, last year was called Sango Shairi. And this is all kinds of shairi on rocks, um, Dakhani, uh, you know, uh, shairi mainly, because it is the Dakhan area. And um, that is also wonderful. You, you all can check it out um, when you uh, have the interest and the time. So uh, let me move on now. Um, 
it went on like that. The challenges were there, of course, but, um, you know, um, the climax of this was that Ramesh Prasad Garu, who is the um, head of LV Prasad, as you all know, he gave us Prasad's IMAX free for the premiere. I, mean, we, I can't tell you how, what a joy that was. And I will request um, um, our tech help uh, team to please put on the PowerPoint just for a, for one bit, and then we'll come back out to it. Could we have that PowerPoint, please? So these are, this is the premiere picks. Can you believe this crowd on a Sunday morning at 10 o'clock for a documentary on rocks? Can you believe it? This was the crowd that came. They, they were standing, if you can see on the right, the door, they're sitting on the steps. The aisle is fully covered. There's a big aisle between these seats, but you can't make it out because people are sitting there. On the right side is the door. There were two doors. People were, they told me later, we were standing on one leg and watching. You know, this is for rocks. Y'all will be glad to know this is for rocks and um, it gave us um, that's fine. Thank you. Now we'll we'll come back to the PowerPoint later, please. Um, we'll do it later. We can get out of this now. Thank you. Yeah, so I just wanted to show you that premiere to show you and assure you not only just show you, but assure you that your area, the study of the earth has enormous value and people care about it. Uh, this is the evidence of it, that this whole process of the film that I just described to you, where people just joined, they came, they worked, um, and then the climax of this premiere. And um, I'll talk more about the outreach that we are doing uh, in a little while. And I really will try and wrap up soon so that we have some uh, interaction. I would love to it to be more interactive rather than me just going on. So, um, um, Devinderji suggested that I should, you know, talk a little bit about the challenges and I will. Um, there are always challenges, you know, fundraising is huge, as you know, and I've talked a little bit and you're more than well aware of it. You'll write so many grants yourself and things like that. So, um, but I've mentioned to you that this film comes from a different space. It comes from a service space. So, you know, the fundraising also has been kind of exciting and interesting and rewarding. Uh, not just financially, but like I mentioned to you in, in ways of other contributions. Um, the one part of the challenge I can talk a little bit about is, you know, physically in the actual production, in the actual shooting, um, you know, um, there's always an issue with a woman filmmaker uh, and um, I'm very laid back. I'm not a very uh, aggressive person. so. It's always, it was always a challenge with the camera crew, especially to make them do as I wanted, you know? So, because these are, they were, I had two, on two occasions, I had um, the women camera people and these were students of mine. So that was very easy. Uh, but for the major part of it, they were men and uh, the, the, even the assistant cameramen were men. And that was not a real issue, except that, you know, Technical things um, always uh, become this frenzy of, you know, knowledge and superiority and knowing and, you know, this whole uh, matrix happens. And um, it was interesting because these were all good guys and they were friends of mine. And, you know, it was all, it, it wasn't an impossible challenge, but there were this issue, which I think you all will uh, like to know about. So, um, you know, they would say, oh, ye camera, naya camera, ab ye use kar let's, this can do this also. Let's do this also. This does shift focus for enormous depth of field. So let's do enormous shift focus. And my personality as a director is not, you know, the film does not say, watch me, look at me. It doesn't, it's not that kind of film. And shift focus and these kind of effects that uh, gadgets give you nowadays is not my real interest. You know, I, I like seeing it when other people do it. I may use it sometimes myself, but I don't want the whole film to be like that. There's much more important, profound matter that has to be shared, which is enjoyable and beautiful. So I don't want the focus to go there. But these young assistant cameramen, they were all very interested and enthusiastic, so they would do it and 
and you're paying like you know for the camera i had to pay you know so um for the lab you have to pay so there were all these financial considerations to do it fast and not waste time and you know, usual stuff and so then it became a bit of a challenge that how do you and also over 10 years there were many different groups so every time you had to sort of you know inculcate the discipline to not go wild with the gadget and stay focused on the content and stuff like that and so there my uh, solution was just to give explanations that's the only way i know how to work and so i would give long explanations and you know finally they said oh my god she's going to give another explanation let's just do it you know so we managed so that was uh, one of the small challenges i wouldn't say it was a huge challenge but just to share that sometimes technical know-how can come in the way of work and you know sometimes there's a gender issue there as well and sometimes not so you know women can also be as uh, techno savvy and uh, knowledgeable you know thank god and i myself you know have to know stuff to edit and shoot and stuff so you know i'm not saying that's a great gender divide but sometimes these things can happen the more important challenge um, and one that i'm very proud of is in the content itself so for instance i'll give you an example of the story the folklore legend of yellamma renukamma so now this is a beloved deity renukamma yellamma you know it's beloved in the region uh, and all over the country i think and then um, what happened was we um, the story is i think you all know and i don't want to tell the story too much but it's jamadagni parshurama renukamma and yellamma these are the main characters in the fa- in the story and usually when the story is told it's told from the story of jamadagni and parshurama you know these are the sage is a wonderful sage and parshurama is one of the most you know revered characters of our culture and it's told from that angle but renukamma and yellamma are also there right and usually they are not given that much importance in the story and so for me when i first uh, you know at in hyderabad there is a in our whole area actually there is a tradition called oggu katha the folk tradition of telangana where they perform the uh, the story the folk story as well as they sing it uh, you know with um, folk instruments and it's a beautiful uh, form of expression of cultural expression in our region i had taken my children to see this renukamma yellamma oggu katha and in that when i saw you know that they were at the point where so jamadagni um at one point in the story and you'll see it in the film you'll see the whole story but i don't want to get too much into it jamadagni asks parshurama to behead renukamma his own mother okay and it is a a moment of such trauma for this woman for renukamma and for parshurama of course to be told to kill his own mother and so she starts running from him and he because he's be, being obedient son he chases her with an axe hmm, to behead her and the in that ogu katha performance the lament at that point from renukamma was so moving was so moving and they went on to say that she went all over the country in some places she turned into a tree and then parshurama made all the leaves fall and she had to come out in another place she turned into a river and parshurama dried up the water and she had to come out in the dakkan when she comes to the deccan and you all will know the deccan crater and the whole plateau she found the rocks okay and in the rocks she found renukamma uh, yellamma's house and yellamma was the most generous kind woman and she gave her shelter and that's how the story goes on you know but when i heard that in this in that ogukatha i said my god look at this and how much we value yellamma and renukamma you know even today they are the presiding like leading deities of our worship and um, and so you know uh, uh, in telling that story i did not want it to be only from jamadagni and parshurama's angle i wanted renukamma's trauma and her experience to be featured i wanted the rocks to be featured the rocks were so important and here was a wonderful story and i wanted yellamma to be featured Yellamma is a beloved deity, and even today people bring rocks home and worship rocks as Yellamma. You know, so this was um, just a magical connect, and so 
um, the way I tell the story now, the way we wrote the animation, it's it's done in Cheryl style animation, like I mentioned. And so we start with Yelamal, you know, hut and the two women meeting and then the story unfolds. So, you know, the content also, if if you come at it, uh, you can you can um, infuse it with different meanings and make it richer. So as a woman, I found this was um, an added layer of richness that I could bring to that story. Okay, uh, let me see what else. Um, yeah, let me just uh, do uh, go over two more quick points and then I'm going to really um, try and make this interactive if possible. So I would like to talk about uh, the, this, again, the style of the film, which like you all know by now that it's very uh, rooted in our cultural imagination around the rocks, the deep ties that human imagination and landscape has. Um, and I didn't want interviews. I've mentioned it to you before, but we did need a narration. We need to have a way to tie a sutradhar of sorts, a narrator. Uh, and and uh, I didn't want some voice coming and telling every step of the way what you should think and what you should feel. I didn't. That's not the way I like to make tell a story. So um, we thought, OK, we also need to connect to younger people. So how shall we do that? We thought, oh, what do young people nowadays like? Music is very important to us. There's a lot of music in the film. We said, OK, so now let's do the narration in a rap song. Now, this was a... I can't even tell you what a leap of faith this was because I have no idea. I'm not very musical, uh, first of all. I enjoy lyrics more than music. Oh, hey, that the gene is missing in my DNA. And so first that challenge. And then secondly, you know, uh, I have no clue about rap. I had no clue about rap. So that was another whole learning. And here too, I must say, people just came forward. You know, um, friends gave uh, suggestions, this, that. And we found this wonderful young DJ, Murto. His name is Murti, actually. He's called DJ Murto Vic. Um, like that, like the Croatian scientist name. He has a VIC at the end. Um, he, uh, you know, the one that uh, is mentioned on your website. So DJ Murtovic. Out of the kindness of his heart, his love for Hyderabad, he's settled here now, although he comes from um, a Chennai background. And he said, I'll do it. I'll do that. I'll compose the song for you. So that was a huge, huge contribution. Then I have a dear friend, Usha Raman, who's the head of the communication department at University of Hyderabad. And I know her you know, through teaching together and stuff like that. And so I said, Usha, and she's a poet of Hyderabad. You know, so she's written uh, in in that research that I mentioned. Um, she was also one of the persons that we interviewed, and she shared many poems that she's written on the rocks. So you know that was um, so. I said, Usha, can you write a song for us that we can make into a rap? And she said, Okay. It was wonderful. You know, people just agreed. So then she wrote the song. It was all in English. So uh, it was wonderful, but all in English. And I didn't want only English. I said. We, we are not only English, we are also Dakhni, we are also Telugu. Why should we do that? And so we've written a, multi, a trilingual song, a rap song. And I cannot tell you the number of musicians who have contributed to it. If you again go on the website, there's a button called Song Lore, and you'll enjoy these young musicians, you know, uh, how, how, uh, how they've contributed, etc. If you're interested, you can look that up. So that was how we did the narration. What I'd like to do is maybe um, request that you share the, uh, the, the video of the rap piece. So the narration goes all through the film and there are four pieces of the rap song that narrate it. But one piece that I'll show you now is called, um, you know, it's about the neighborhoods. You know how the... You know, I'm sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry. You know, once I start talking, I don't stop. This is a big problem. Uh, thank you for stopping. I'll just just tell you. All I wanted to say was the the rap song comes in four parts in the film, and this is only one part. Huh? And um, uh, this has to do with the how are uh, the city's imagination, this ima the sensibility of the city, connects with the landscape in the nomenclature of the city. 
there are so many places in the city uh, uh, you know in english in um, dakhani in telugu that is connected uh, in the way we have named it bora banda banda in telugu and kannada means uh, rock and so bora banda is that's the name of the place bandla guda the guda of bandlas that's where how, literally you know uh, so so i we, it's a it's a bit of the song that uh, you can please hear now and enjoy thank you please play it and i'm sorry for creating that confusion पार्टी गड्डा एर्रा गड्डा पार्सी कुट्टा नल्ला गड्डा रॉक हिल्स रॉक हिल्स चंद्रायन गुट्टा पंजाब गुट्टा नवद पहाड़ गगन पहाड़ गंगा बोली का पहाड़ तक्के तकुम The music of our rocks can be heard today in the calls on our buses and the voices on our trains. And deep in the rhythm of the pelting rain. Habshi guda bandla guda nana kram guda. And deep in the rhythm of the pelting rain. Habshi guda bandla guda nana kram guda. Oh mia, telugu la chappu na kunte da daachu kunna i perlu. Bara mai na ra samaya mai na. बोरा <laughs> मल गुड़ा पुपुल गुड़ा बीराम गुड़ा खाजा गुड़ा खाजा गुड़ा खाजा गुड़ा खाजा गुड़ा खाजा गुड़ा खाजा गुड़ा ना कुंडे लुटा चुकना thank you ma'am that was just one example of uh, how you know the rocks are interfacing with our culture so how much time do we have uh, i i would uh, can we have ma'am it's a wonderful uh, your ppt video and all uh, can we ha- can we now have the interactive session yeah so um, i'd like to quickly um, if there's time go through that ppt to show you and i won't talk through it you will just flip through it that is just part of the outreach that we are doing now and i want you to see the kind of uh, places different different diverse spaces that we um, uh, are covering so it can be have that we'll just scroll through it really quick don't play the videos just scroll through it and y'all will just see it um, get an idea of the kind of spaces 
action. But the first time I saw this, I, I was so excited and 45. <laughs> Yeah, you can you can close that, and I'll conclude with uh, with that. Uh, you know, those videos were about the the response, and I think you all will be very happy to know the response has been with for great love, uh, a lot of love, a lot of response, saying how much people do value the rocks. So I think you all will be glad to to know that, uh, and I'll conclude now, and we'll do the interactive. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was a uh, thought provoking and marvelous uh, talk and the trailer and your PPT are like uh, marvelous. They are luring us to to watch your entire film uh, as soon as possible. Thank you so much. And we can take a couple of questions if uh, anybody can. Ah, can you give the mic please? So uh, I join uh, director and you first to greet all the colleagues and including you on International Women's Day, which is uh, being celebrated though uh, maybe 15 hours after that it might have been in the US. Uh, but what uh, I would like to uh, first compliment you and also convey the message that through your passion, you have shown that women are not only uh, worried uh, are looking for the life what we see today, but even the things which does not have life. So you have shown the broadness of the heart of the woman by showing affection to the, uh, uh, the stones or rocks of the Hyderabad. So thank you very much. We had learned about it through the uh, Naren Luther's book. You might have also read. And uh, many more things. Uh, I would also like to add one thing which you might be uh, liking it, that 2.5 billion, what I see in the trailer of the movie, also marks the time in the uh, evolution of the life. And the life, the evolution changed having cyanobacteria at that time. And, and that's how we connect the 2.5 billion rocks of the Hyderabad having our open rock museum in our campus. And we invite you to be with us. Uh, on this day, when we celebrate the achievements of the women and look forward that they uh, come much more in a much more way, particularly in the uh, science and research domain. But you would like to learn from you with your varied experiences across different parts of the world. What message would you like to give to all of us and particularly to the young women researchers? Kind of the problems you have confronted with to come out of that so that we make our life better in this campus and certainly through this campus whole world. Thank you so much for your kind words. Um, thank you so much. Um, I would definitely like to visit and see your rock uh, museum. I, it sounds fabulous. 
So I'll make it a point. Uh, I'll be coming soon to Hyderabad and I'll reach out um, and we'll do that. Um, you know, I, I, um, I, I'm sure the lady researchers, the young lady researchers um, will have things to share with me also. So this cannot be a one way uh, thing. Uh, we all have, um, you know, our own challenges to overcome, um, whether it is societal, family, health. Um, my message, if I have a message, uh, my films are my messages. I don't really talk about that, uh, you know, but I would say find a passion and follow it. That's the only way you can overcome these obstacles. These obstacles are there. You cannot wish them away, you know, uh, whether in the workplace, in social life, in personal relationships uh, with your children, uh, you know, with, uh, there are challenges everywhere. In work, in, in, in improving your own um, um, skills, you know, skilling yourself up. There are so many challenges and you need time and energy and effort. And to take that time and energy uh, away from, you know, our, we have huge priorities in our personal lives as well, right? We do have those living things to take care of, as you mentioned, sir. Um, but if you have that passion and if you follow it, um, you'll, I, I find that you find ways to negotiate those challenges. And that would be a key takeaway for me in my life over the years of doing all this, that, you know, if follow it um, and don't give up anything else because your life must be rich and filled with all aspects. So, you know, uh, at the end of the day, we don't want to just have one thing to hold on to. We have varied things in all of our lives, men and women. And so finding that passion and following it is the only way. Anybody else would like to have information from her? Okay, if uh, nobody is uh, there, then we will, uh, with your permission, ma'am, can we move uh, towards the important occasion, uh, which is uh, like uh, uh, to felicitate the women achievers of CSIR in GRI. So with wonderful, that, yeah. wonderful. I look forward to it. Thank you. And I now request our director to come on to the dias to felicitate our women employees. Uh, so um, in this, uh, we have uh, seven categories. Uh, those are like scientific, technical, postdoctoral, DST women scientists, doctoral support, doctoral and support staff and essential services. So in this, I would like to first call upon Dr. N. Satyavani. Uh, maybe she is not here because of her unavoidable uh, engagement. So I request uh, Dr. Prakash Kumar, uh, sir, to speak a few words about this. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we will now move to the next uh, uh, category that is technical officer. Uh, Dr. Can I uh, just invite uh, Dr. Swarnapriya Chaudhary Technical Officer, Gravity and Magnetic uh, Division, Gravity, Magnetic and Paleomagnetic Division. I invite her uh, to the dais. I, I request Dr. Avedam Bansal, sir, uh, to speak a few words about her. Okay, as Dr. Bansal is not there here, I can speak about her because she is from my division only. So she's a, uh, like uh, she's a very good uh, worker and she recently finished her PhD and she's very, very uh, efficiently processing the gravity and magnetic uh, data. So congratulations, Vanapriya. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Now I am like excited and happy to invite my close friend, Dr. K. Chandrakala, DST Women Scientist, and I request her to come on to the dais. Yeah, congratulations, uh, Dr. Chandrakala. So she is a very silent worker, and uh, she publishes a lot of work in the last few years. Uh, I have been seeing her in, the, in, in our division 
that uh, see really works very rigorously on uh, deep seismic uh, data set, which is a very huge amount of data, but uh, slowly and uh, very calmly she completes the uh, the very rigorous uh, uh, the waveform modeling and uh, ray tracing, and then uh, and then uh, when I have seen that uh, whatever because she never exposes herself, she, this is the work I did uh, publicly, but uh, uh, nowadays uh, when when I joined that group. Then I, I found that uh, really she uh, she did a lot of work in a very good uh, reported journals. Uh, the, the 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 amount of data published, the the amount of publications, which uh, actually in fact uh, I found that she is one of the uh, scientists in our division, deep deep seismic sounding, where uh, where she publishes uh, continuously publishing the data set. So I I found that she is really very. Uh, uh, very much uh, contributing to the the one of the uh, divisions uh, in the NGRI, where uh, uh, where people are not very uh, not many people are uh, coming and uh, and contributing to the subject. So I, I think her contribution is uh, really praiseworthy and remarkable. Uh, for this, I congratulate her once more. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for your kind words. Next is Miss Arti Panikar, Doctor Fellow. Uh, I request Doctor M. Ramohan, PI, and guide to speak about her. Um, good evening all. Uh, compliments to Arti and other achievers, women achievers. I just want to say only one thing because the organizers asked me to be very brief. Uh, her approach is that she wants to be, means uh, never give up or never uh, uh, give up. That's the only uh, word means I, which I can say. And she's always very cool and especially in the field or in the laboratory. Often in the, our labs, we used to spend, especially she's working these days in Tim's lab, we had to spend long, long hours and uh, late evenings and all she is, means very passionate and learn a lot of new things and this year we're expecting her phd as well as three more new publications good luck sir. thank you ramanjar Thank you. I now invite uh, Ms. Rohini, administration uh, section, for her wonderful support. I request uh, Mr. Satish Ji, AO, to speak about her. Because of the time constraint, we will have a brief discussion. Happy Women's Day. Uh, Mrs. Rohini, uh, she uh, is handling the GST of this institute uh, across uh, all the entities like GST department, stores and purchase, various scientific groups and stores and purchase uh, and our accounts. Secondly, she is vigorously pursuing clearing of uh, OBs uh, of something like 11 year old OBs uh, with the help of, uh, I think, under the guidance of uh, Dr. H.V. Satinarayana, then FAO Anupmar. Plus, she is a working woman taking care of her children alone here. I think her husband is away off somewhere. Please give a clap to her. Congratulations. Um, the next uh, felicitation is for uh, Ms. Samina, Technical Officer, Information Section. Uh, she is also not available, so I request Diljitji to uh, receive from Director Sir. And I request uh, Dr. Devender to speak some. Works for her. First of all, we are very happy International Women Day to all, and uh, congratulations to Samina 
in fact uh, the information division building is standing on two pillars and uh, one is the uh, who is being felicitated and the other is who is receiving the prize on her behalf and about samina actually uh, it's a very challenging job in information uh, I mean, she works uh, i can say day and night i mean there is no time limit for us that it is only 9 to 5 job or 9 to 5 30 job uh, many times it has so happened uh, that at the uh, night 11 o'clock or early morning uh, we had told her that okay it has to be done and she has done it like please she sees that the work is done as and when it is given to her even today she left early in the morning and but she uh, you might have received the email reminder and all so she has made arrangement yesterday itself for all the things to be done automatically today so she is that kind of dedicated worker uh, whom we feel uh, means i am proud of it to have her in uh, our division at least and congratulations that uh, she has been recognized for this work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, with lot of respect, I now invite Dr. Preeti Shah, physiotherapist in our dispensary under essential service category. So I request uh, I request Dr. Babu sir uh, to speak few words about her. Or if not, Dr. Devinder. Achha, Dr. Tibari sir. I, I sincerely request you to talk. <laughs> I, I, I can say a few words about her. Oh, sorry, sir. So uh, I would speak on the behalf of all the uh, patients who <laughs> had been uh, given uh, therapy uh, by Dr. Priti. And uh, very recently, uh, you might have seen, um, I made an accident during the INSA meeting and uh, almost two months, I had to uh, tie my hand. And now it moves, thanks to her that uh, and uh, during that time when I interacted her, uh, I had to seek uh, one or two day prior appointment because I realized that she is not only uh, making people physically relieved from pain, but also emotionally people get rid of pain. And, and that's, that's the uh, biggest uh, services she had been offering through our dispensary and I thank her on behalf of all of you for uh, doing this and thanks director for recognizing her services. Congratulations, Doctor. I now invite uh, K. Sunita Garu, uh, senior, senior most person in the garden, from the garden and horticulture section. If she is present, Sunita Garu Nara. Pilandi. So I request Tirupati Garu to speak few words about her. If Tirupati sir is available. I think uh, a round of applause to her because our uh, institute is so beautiful because of those people. Good evening, everybody. Happy Women's Day. The last two, 10 months I'm observing she is not only she, but others also very sincere and hard worker and dedicated also. And uh, she is uh, this year we recommended Sunita for this award. Happy and Thank you, sir. Uh, yeah. Uh, so before, uh, like I would call upon 
Dr. Kusmita, uh, for out of thanks, I would just share uh, a small funny thing. Please bear with me. It is a totally on a lighter note. Uh, it is like uh, just pay little attention. Uh, female is designed by God to receive, and whatever she receives, she incubates, multiplies it, and gives it back to the male. She was built to do like that. If you give her a house, she multiplies it and gives back to a beautiful home. If you give her a, a groceries, groceries, she multiplies it and gives back a delicious meal. And if you give her a frustration, she multiplies it and you all know the result. Thank you very much. And I call up on now Dr. Kusmita. She proposed the vote of thanks. Dr. Kusmita. Uh, this is uh, good news for uh, all the outsourced women staff working in this institute. So for your matters, actually to smoothen your matters here, the director has been pleased to uh, appoint a coordinator. Actually, uh, the coordinator will be Mrs. Uh, Ms. Uh, Farveen Begum, technical officer, who will be coordinating your course, and she'll be working closely with uh, Tirupati sir, who is the in charge of HLS section. And uh, in uh, due uh, in the times of her absence, there is an alternate uh, officer that will be Miss L uh, Manjula. I think this is the Women's Day gift uh, to the uh, women uh, also staff of NGRI. Great news! Thank you, and I would now request Dr. Kusmita to propose out of thanks. Uh, good afternoon, and uh, we have come to the end of uh, this year's program of International Women's Day. I, uh, it's my pleasure to thank you, Oma, for your uh, discourse on the rocks in cultural imagination. And I thank you also for taking the time out to go to our website and reading more of what NGRI does on Hyderabad rocks. And um, yes, uh, Doctor has uh, issued you an invitation, and we hope that you will be here uh, with us to see how we look at rocks or what we try to learn from them. And I thank each and every person present uh, in the hall today. In in the, the small uh, microcosm of our NGRI, I think we have seen this International Women's Day program um, grow uh, and widen in its meaning. And uh, it's, I think it's a very proud moment that uh, we, are, um, we are using this time to recognize people's uh, contributions, each of which are very important in totally diverse aspects. And I'm sure this is true for men and women both, everybody in fact, and there should be occasions when we recognize it for everyone. We've sat with women and we have come to a structured program to the extent that uh, uh, Mr. Satish, the AO has made a new announcement. So uh, that's a further positive step uh, towards, um, you know, increasing the uh, comfort in the working environment, which, which is a fundamental step towards um, empowerment. So, with uh, that positive note, uh, thanks to everybody who has uh, worked so hard and the jury who has prepared this list. Uh, we thought we would introduce the jury also, but uh, I think uh, Dr. Ravi Kumar, who was chair of uh, the committee, is not here. So, anyway. Um, a lot of time has gone over the last weeks to prepare this and uh, thank you for being with us on this day. There'll be a photograph of all the award recipients with director. I request you to come to the dais. And uh, 
Uh, you please carry your certificate to have a photograph. That's all. One can that. Thank you. Uh, now we. Uh, uh, after the like uh, we we are going to have a national anthem now and uh, after this after the national anthem we will uh, please join us uh, for a uh, cup of tea uh, high tea in the car parking main building uh, so now uh, shall we uh, raise for the national anthem jan gan man adhinayak jaya he भारत भाग्य विधाता पंजाब सिंध गुजरात मराठा प्राविड उत्कल बंगा विंध हिमाचल यमुना गंगा उच्छल जल दितरंगा तव शुभ नामे जागे तव शुभ आशीष मांगे गाहे तव जय गाथा जन गण मंगल दायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विदाता जय हे जय हे जय हे जय 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 हे जय हिंद थैंक यू वन एंड ऑल let us let us meet uh, at car parking main building kare high tech 